Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Garrett here with the Self Preservation Podcast. This is a new podcast that we are putting together, um, and basically it aims at anything that's self-preservation. Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we preserve ourselves as human beings uh, through self-defense, through training, through you know exercise. The list goes on and on. Um, we really, really wanted to bring kind of a informal but fun look at different ways that people preserve themselves, uh, whether that be future preservation, current preservation, whatever it is. Um, the things that people like to do to keep themselves mentally healthy, physically healthy, uh, safe, all that stuff. So um, for this first little podcast, uh, we actually have the guy that is the head of our Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu program. Um, he is a black belt. Uh, he doesn't need much of an uh, excuse me, my computer's going crazy. He doesn't need much of an introduction, but we're going to bring it over to Kyle Propes. Um, and Kyle, I'll let you say a little bit more about yourself, um, starting with name, whatever you want. Just introduce yourself. Yeah, sure. Uh, Kyle Propes, uh, you know, born and raised in, in Georgia for the most part. Um, got into jujitsu right after high school. So graduated high school in 07. Uh, always been an athlete, so I was looking for something kind of immediately after high school to get involved with. Um, and originally went to the school looking to get into Muay Thai or some sort of striking. Uh, the Thai class wasn't going on that particular day, so uh, the sales reps threw me into a jiu-jitsu class. And... Uh, <laughs> They're like, check this out. Looked kind of weird, you know, dudes rolling around in pajamas and, you know, hugging <laughs> each other and sweating all over each other. But I uh, took the class nonetheless and, uh, you know, I've been training relatively consistently with a few hiatuses over the past uh, 15 years or so. So um, it's been quite a journey. Uh, certainly it's taught me a lot and uh, it's, it's allowed me to learn uh, a very intimate uh, area of discipline, uh, which I've then applied to, you know, school, uh, business and life in general. So, uh, it's, it's been a fun ride and, uh, always been into firearms, but, uh, you know, jujitsu kind of naturally led to that for me, especially once you realize it's a very similar process and learning techniques, uh, and, 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 you know, you can apply that same discipline there as well. Yeah. I think it's, um, I've noticed with a lot of people that, you know, jujitsu and everyone has their different backgrounds with martial arts and, um, and in general, you know, anyone you get into there, it's just a phenomenal thing to do. But, you know, on top of that, like for me, when I got out of the army and I decided, you know what, if I'm going to go, I was thinking about going to law enforcement and I thought if I'm going to go into some sort of form of law enforcement, there's actually a lot better chance that I'm going to have to be putting my hands on somebody versus having to use a firearm. So while I love firearms and I do see it as a, a type of martial art, um, that was kind of what started my journey on the jujitsu road, if you will. Um, but you mentioned a little bit about, you know, discipline. And I think, um, you know, you were, you said you uh, carry it over into business, carry it over in whatever else. I think one of the biggest things that I like about martial arts in general, I won't just put this down to jujitsu, um, but jujitsu does a really good job of it because it's a force on force um, type thing. It makes you really disciplined and it also makes you realize that you're not like there's bigger fish out there. Um, a lot of the guys that I know that are extremely capable when it comes to jujitsu have been like humbled by that. And I think that's um, one thing I really, really, really like about the jujitsu world personally um, is the humility that comes out of it. So for you, here's, here's a big question. I think a lot of people who own guns or are thinking about doing jujitsu, whatever the case may be. Um, w why is it that somebody like yourself, who's so good at jujitsu might decide to carry a firearm? What's, what's the thought process behind that? Uh, you, you know, you're a black belt. Why, why do you need a gun? Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's <laughs> certainly <laughs> That's a loaded question, but you know, <laughs> you know, uh, it, 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 it's certainly a force multiplier, right? I mean, it's, I, I don't really know of any martial art in the world that, you know, can, can take on, you know, typically more than one individual at, at a time. I think it's very difficult if, 
there are additional, um, you know, individuals coming at you uh, in a heated situation. Um, you know, it's not to say that, you know, jujitsu or, or a particular martial art might, may not assist you in that situation. And, uh, hopefully you can avoid that situation altogether. But, you know, when, when you have a family or, or, or friends, um, or you're simply outnumbered, I mean, it's, it's certainly a force multiplier that, that brings you onto the same level as, as multiple, mm -hmm. uh, assailants. Right. Yeah. No, I think that makes sense. I mean, for me, especially, obviously I came from the other end of it, but what I always tell people is, you know, you can study something for a long time and get really, really good at it, but it doesn't mean that it's the end all be all. And for me with, with jujitsu, like, you know, I, I noticed so many gun owners that have the firearm and I, I always joke with them. I said, well, you have lethal force and words. Those are your <laughs> options, yeah. but, you know, or run away if you can. Right. Right. Um, and there's kind of a stigma that develops in the gun community of people that carry that is just not reality. Um, but the same is true, I think, for a lot of folks in jujitsu um, and where they think jujitsu is going to be the end all be all answer. Example of this where where I really see some issues with relying on just one means of, of defense is, you know, jujitsu is a lot about getting in closing distance, grappling with someone, you know, chokes, submissions, different things like that. Um, and depending on even what style, whether it's competition or whether it's, you know, a little bit more self-defense orientated stuff, you know, it makes a, it makes a big difference for some people depending on, you know, just their mindset, their process behind it, uh, of what they're actually doing. So I think it's important to understand something. We're just in a podcast. <laughs> um, we just had a, a student walk in, but, um, you know, it's important to understand that, um, either way, you know, you gotta, you gotta be mindful of that stuff. You gotta think of, okay, what's my objective. And that's what a lot of jujitsu people don't necessarily do is they don't think about multiple different attackers. They don't think about, oh, what about a knife? You know, you close distance with someone and someone pulls out a pocket knife. You might've just made the wrong choice. So, um, that's me blabbing a little bit about why I think it's kind of important, I guess. Um, but yeah, I just think that that's a big part of what we're trying to do with the training facility is getting people to realize like, Hey, you need some grappling, you know, maybe some striking wouldn't be a bad idea. Hey, you know, knowing what to do with your gun, all that stuff is really, really important. Yeah. I think you see it on both sides, certainly, um, you know, getting into jujitsu and, and martial arts just in general, I certainly drank the Kool-Aid and, <laughs> you know, early on I was, you, you know, you just, you just, it, it brings a lot more confidence, puts a little more pep in your step. Uh, it certainly does humble you, uh, yeah. like you mentioned earlier, uh, <laughs> you, you, you do realize there's, there's a lot bigger fish in the sea. And I think it's important to, you know, and in jujitsu, we call it, you know, tapping, tapping out, you, you submit to someone. And, uh, I think Joe Rogan put it as like, that's, that's you, you died, right. You, yep. you died in that, um, in that trial. Right. Yeah. So, um, similarly to the firearms industry or people who carry, um, you know, everybody wants to buy like that next, that next toy or, or the coolest, like next, mm -hmm. uh, most recent gear Thing but, or whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. You know, cause it's, it's pretty and it looks awesome, but you know, it's, it's rare that you see those individuals out on, you know, an outdoor range where if they can actually move around yep. and they're, they're getting reps in with, with their gear or, you know, that new $2,000 rifle. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it is interesting to, see someone trying to bridge the gap between those two scenarios. Um, you know, in jujitsu, there's a lot of things that you would not do in a real life situation. Um, and typically you kind of bring it back to the fundamentals and the basics of the art. Um, you know, grandmaster Miguel, uh, he, he's who I got my black belt under. And, you know, he always used to talk about how uh, jujitsu is losing the martial part of the martial art, right? That's how into art. <laughs> that, that's, that's, yeah, it, it, that's how it started. And, you know, he always goes on about the streets of Brazil and how they threw down there. And, you know, it, it, it was truly a martial art and I think it really is, but there's certainly been, certainly been a lot of adaptations to, um, you know, the sport, uh, for, for competition and things of that nature that, uh, may not pan out well in a real life situation. Yeah. Well, and I think it's just like anything, um, like I, I relate it to the shooting world because there are two types of worlds, if you will, 
um, that sometimes have a difficulty bridging that gap. I don't know why. Um, in other words, in the shooting world, you have the competition people. And a lot of times, they'll just dive right into competition. They're shooting any type of competition, competition, competition. They're very performance-based. And then you have like the, the people that maybe do it for a job, and they're your you know, law enforcement, military, whatever. Um, having been on both sides of that fence, um, as someone that just enjoyed being a performance shooter, then went into the military, got out of the military, and is trying to bring the two worlds together, it's a very similar dynamic in the jiu-jitsu world, meaning that there's a lot of people that you know are afraid if they practice things that do well in competition that they won't be able to access the street self-defense stuff. Um, you know, my approach with firearms, and I, I'd be interested to pick your brain on this, but my approach on firearms with this has always been you need to cross-train. Like, you need to know what you're going to use in real life. But just because I'm used to running around in USPSA and, you know, shooting multiple targets from multiple different positions, when I go to clear a room, there's going to be something else that's inputting into that situation. And that something else is another threat, a human being, someone else who's cognizant, making choices, making decisions. And I have to react based on that. So the scenario just in my brain completely changes. Now, there are some areas I, I've done videos on bad habits where you have to be cognizant of that stuff and you want to train around it. Um, how do you put that into jujitsu? Like where, where do you see the line for jujitsu with that? Um, so, you know, kind of like we just discussed, uh, I think there's a misconception about, about the sport world. Um, you know, I think sometimes it gets a bad rep because it may be hard to, to follow and, and, you know, some of the moves, you know, people can look at it, not knowing mm -hmm. any jujitsu at all and be like, there's no way that would work. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but what they're not understanding is that all of these techniques, uh, allow individuals to, uh, you know, to spar, to train on mm -hmm. a daily basis. And so it really develops, uh, your ability to be, um, comfortable in uncomfortable situations. And so that I think is one of the biggest takeaways from, you know, competitive jujitsu, mm -hmm. sport jujitsu, whatever you want to call it. Uh, at the end of the day, it, it really, you know, it really all comes from, from the same place. And there's been adaptations from, you know, different arts, whether it's Sambo yeah. or judo is a lot judo, of judo, yeah. Greco, um, you know, and you start seeing kind of the overlap of all of these arts in, in what is now, you know, known as grappling. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that, that's kind of the biggest takeaway from, for, for sport jujitsu. Um, you know, when you're, when you're truly learning just self-defense techniques, it's very difficult to get reps in, right? And that's that's what a lot of shooting is all about. And and a lot of, you know, whether you're in the military and a big stack, like, I mean, how, how many reps are you getting in going yeah. through these rooms, right? Uh, same with jujitsu, right? It's it's all about all about reps. And it's not just, fi what I think people miss a lot is it's not just, it's not just physical discipline, it's mental discipline. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mental discipline to be able to, be cognizant of what you're doing and why you're doing it, mm -hmm. right? So like you say, reps in a stack. Well, if you're the dude that's just kind of like not present there and you're in the stack and you're like getting the reps in, but you don't understand the principle, um, it's kind of wasted effort. I talked about this a little bit. The difference between, um, you know, Grant, Grantham had Haley on and basically uh, Travis Haley was talking about knowledge isn't necessarily power, it's potential power. So you gain this knowledge, it's potential power, it depends on how you use it. Um, and I kind of think of that with our slogan, you know, the educate, train, perform. Um, education is so key because people need to understand in order to train properly and perform how they want, depending on the situation. So, you know, when we get a lot of people where we, you know, it's that discipline, it's that mental discipline. If you don't have mental discipline in, in your jujitsu or what you're doing, then you might not be aware of some bad habits that you develop. Um, but at that high level, if you're really disciplined, uh, about what you're doing, you're analytical, you're paying attention to those things, um, I think that is so much more key um, than worrying about like, well, you're dropping your knee when you shoot in. You're, you'd smash your knee on concrete. And it's like, well, you know, depends. Maybe. Am I training it? Am I aware of it? Like, no. Maybe I am. Yes, I am. You know what I mean? Like, it yeah. just comes down to those things where if you're cognizant of them, you di you're disciplined in them. Like, to me, it seems so simple. Okay, when I'm in the gym, I have the privilege of dropping my knee on the mat. 
you know, not a big deal Mm -hmm. when I'm, if I'm into a street fight or something like that, maybe don't want to drop anything on the, you know, on the floor. Maybe I just want to create space, get away. But the same people from both sides of jujitsu that are sitting there criticizing the sport world for not being realistic. And the sport guys are criticizing the self-defense guys for being too focused on self-defense. Hey, that doesn't work in a jujitsu versus jujitsu. Um, I just think it's kind of a silly game at the end of the day. I think it just depends on what you train, what you focus on. You can focus on both. Um, and there's practical applications for either of them is my two cents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, the great thing about jujitsu, um, is it really teaches you to problem solve. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, in the self-defense world, especially a lot of these seminars that we see on YouTube and, and stuff like that, um, you know, they're trying to market as like a one, a one, one size fits all. Mm-hmm. Right. And that, you know, you and I both know that's just not the case in any you know, situation, whether it's in a tournament, real life situation. So you're always going to be presented with different problems and, you know, you may be able to solve them uh, a bunch of different ways, but as long as you get to the end result that you're looking for, you know, um, I think, I think that's a success. Yeah. And with jujitsu, you know, you get to practice that every day. (laughs) Um, Over and over and over and over again. Yeah. Sometimes you don't solve those problems. Right. But you learn, um, and, and, you know, maybe you, you come up with a solution to a problem that doesn't work. So you have to go back to the drawing board and, you know, assess what went wrong there. Maybe it was technique, maybe it was conditioning, maybe it's how you're eating, right. Yeah. Um, you know, or how much sleep you got the night before. There's a lot of, a lot of factors that play into it, but I think that translates very well into self-preservation because, mm-hmm. you know, if, 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 uh, you know, real world situation come, comes across your path. I mean, it's going to be a problem you have to solve, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it could, you could have very little time to do that. So if you're not practicing that, that type of problem solving mentality, you know, on a consistent basis, uh, you might run into issues. Yeah. You're, 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 you have a very low chance of, of, you know, solving that problem and, and, and preserving, uh, your life or the life of loved ones. So, yeah. And I think what's key to a lot of people miss this about, you know, jujitsu, uh, and even, you know, room clearing and, and things, a lot of it is principles. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're very, you know, they're, I hate the word because it's so overused, but they're very dynamic, meaning they're, they're kind of, you have to use them when they apply and kind of scoot past them when they don't. Um, so what's tough about any self-defense situation, whether it, whatever it might be, is there's certain things that you could train that would quote unquote be the right answer, but given a certain circumstance, it wouldn't be the right answer. Mm-hmm. And it just all depends on how the other person reacts. So I'll give you an example, um, in the firearms community of a big one that went down on Instagram and everyone lost their mind. Uh, the LAPD SWAT guy that, uh, took a, got shot. And I don't know if you've seen the video, basically dude kind of peeks around a corner is making a call out to the dude and the dude decides to shoot him, shoots him in the chest. He, I think he catches it in the neck, it like kind of nicked him. He was all right. And the guy behind him pulls him, drags him. So people get on the internet. They start talking about every thing you can imagine about that situation. But when we look into it, it's like, you know, there's so many debates that come out of that, but you realize, you know, it's two humans making decisions, right? Mm-hmm. The good guy and the bad guy are both making decisions. So, um, one example is, you know, Oh, he should have switched shoulders. He should have switched to his offhand side because less of him would have been exposed. And you're going, okay, well, that's might, you know, possibly have been an answer to it. But then that also might have meant that he, you know, had to unmount his gun for a second, switch shoulders. And if that guy had decided to come around the corner, both of them would have gotten shot because he dropped security. Right. Mm -hmm. But it also might mean, okay, if there's hard cover, maybe he should have switched shoulders or maybe he shouldn't. Hey, if he hasn't practiced that, maybe he shouldn't. I wouldn't feel too great about taking that shot in an urban environment where, um, you know, to me, accuracy is everything in that situation. So Mm -hmm. the point of all that is not to be like, oh, right or wrong, but it's dynamic. People get decisions. And I think it's the same way with a street fight, with what some of your options are, some of the things you might want to do. Am I with people? Am I not with people? You know, do I need, do I want to go to the ground? How is this person acting? What are their, what, you know, what's kind of going on that? And that's really what we're trying to push in the, I think in the jujitsu program mixed in with kind of some of the um, other elements we want to do. Uh, I think it's really, really important. So with that being said, give us some, um, you know, you're running the, the jujitsu program. Now, um, we have you and Richard, both very, very skilled coming from pretty awesome backgrounds, diverse backgrounds. So what are some goals you have 
for the curriculum here uh, at Executive and what you want, where you want to take it, what you want it to to morph into, the, kind of the the, the ideal um, uh, helping other people reach self preservation. Like, what what is uh, your goal? Uh, so the goal, you know, to spread jujitsu uh, for sure is, yeah. is obviously the number one. It's done a lot for me. Um, it's helped me through a lot of challenges in life, and I just you know, as many people as I can share that with, uh, the better, uh, you mentioned Richard, you know, I think it's cool that we have two instructors that come from a diverse background. You know, he is very oriented in the self-defense aspects of, of jujitsu, which is great. Um, and typically aligns with, uh, you know, solid fundamentals. Uh, but you know, as far as my background, uh, with competing here and there and, you know, being more sport oriented, uh, in tournaments and things of that nature. Uh, I also am happy that we're able to show that side of it as well, uh, because I am a firm believer, you know, rolling every class, you know, uh, making sure that you, you got a gas tank, right. And, and can, can, you know, grapple with, with, with the best of them. So, you know, I think just building the community here and making sure that, everybody feels welcome and, and not pressure, no, no pressure to, you know, go out and, uh, compete and all that stuff. We just, we just want to have a really good group of people who are open-minded and, and willing to learn, you know, even as a black belt, the learning never stops. Like you, you can, you can never be like you, you just, never ends, right. You can yeah. never get to a point where like, well, I finished I'm, it I'm all. I'm literally <laughs> like, the best. I know everything. I, I got everything yeah. like there, you know, every, every, it seems Every time you get on YouTube, there's somebody developing some some new system, um, and so that's great. That's a really, really positive thing about about jujitsu, and um, you know, followed followed by bridging the gap between you know jujitsu and firearms, um, and even some some aspects of striking uh, and, and other arts. Uh, you know, I think too often uh, that's just not talked about. And, you know, in reality, if I'm carrying, um, I'm not trying to get into a grapple match, right? I may use some, some of those tools, right? It's, 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 it's one more tool in the toolbox. You have jujitsu, you have your firearms training, you have your, your communications training. Um, so you have these tools that maybe you only need to utilize one tool for this particular situation, or yeah. maybe you have to tap into all, all, all three of those tools and use a combination. Yeah. And so again, goes back to reps, like if, if you're not practicing that kind of situation, you know, um, all things being equal, uh, you, you really, you might have a hard time. You may yeah. end up going to jail cause you know, you, you pick the wrong you, option. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You pick the wrong option. <laughs> or you, you had a, a hole in some of your training. That you I say, think. Yeah. Something we learned really quickly, um, at, at one of the executive force on force classes is like, man, people are ready to go to that gun. <laughs> when you're a hammer, everything's yeah. a nail, man. And, you know, granted, <laughs> granted it's a class and you want to have fun yeah, and you want to yeah. get to that gun and it's airsoft. So it's, it's, you know, it's, it's obviously more playful. Um, and it is very difficult to do if, if I, you know, I wouldn't even say it's possible to duplicate no, what no. it's going to be limitations like. to simulations. Yeah. yeah. You know, to, to simulate what, what it's going to be like. Um, but you do get to see, you know, to some level how, how humans react and, mm-hmm. and what they're doing with, with, with a firearm. And I think pretty much everybody went to that gun first and, yeah. you know, in certain situations you're going to jail, you're, you're not going to go, you're not going to see your family. Right. Night, yeah. You know, so, uh, and that's the realization people have to understand is the second that gun comes out, like you better be ready not to go home because that's pretty, even if it goes the best that it could go, you're, yeah. you're not going home that night. So, and I think, man, I think that is a huge realization that a lot of people need to uh, grasp is mm-hmm. it's like you use lethal force. Like it, I always say it's like the, it's the alphabet. Mm-hmm. Like you should have all in between a and Z. Let's say a is like the first option and Z is lethal force. You should have all these options. Now you can skip from A straight to Z, but what are all these options? You know, like weigh your options. This is why jujitsu is so valuable to me is the principles of just being in, in contact with somebody, understanding where strikes might come from, like doing some of this stuff training. Um, and then the other thing that's crazy, this was a realization at the last class. Um, yeah, the last class we did that you weren't there, but it, we had a bunch of people doing communication stuff. Mm -hmm. So like when they, after they would do a shoot, it would be like, okay, 
we're not done. Because the one that we did, every, we like just kind of ended it and we mm-hmm. didn't really follow through. But we'd have it where they, they, you know, it would be a situation where it was a shoot or not a shoot or whatever. And not only that, but then they'd have to go up and like, do I disarm the person? Do I just leave them with a gun in their hand? Do right. I, you know, what should I be doing? So just talking people through the most simple things of like, hey, go up, remove the weapon from the person so they're no longer a threat and call 911. Right. It was like awkward, right? Because you're doing a simulation, but it was good for people to learn that. Communication was a big one, right? I told people like, hey, use your voice. Tell the person to stop. Tell them, hey, show me your hand. Whatever you have to do, communicate with them. And people that even admittedly, a lot of people are like, yeah, that's weird. I'm not used to doing that. It's like, well, you got to get the reps in because if you couple panic on top of, I've never done this before, it usually ends foobar. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's pretty bad at Mm -hmm. that point. So, um, a lot of that communication and that stuff is, is really important. I think jujitsu, I mean, kind of summarizing why I really wanted you to come on here is jujitsu and why executive started this jujitsu is such a huge part of self-defense um, physically, in my opinion, um, for a couple reasons, uh, keeps you in really, really good shape. Um, it's, it defeats your ego. Like you said, you have to tap to people. Um, and for people who are already learning firearms, it translates really well to them. Uh, so that's kind of some of the stuff that I, I find really, really important about it. And we're excited to keep building it. And you know, I, you're a really good shooter. So I'm excited to keep having you kind of teach the, the jujitsu portion of it, um, and, and build the class that way. Yeah, well, thanks. Super excited to be here. Um, you know, I've been looking for something like this for a long time, and uh, it, it's nice to kind of be pulled. You know, I've been focused really, really a lot on my career lately um, as a boring accountant, and so it's <laughs> it's really nice to be pulled back into this world and, and, and you know, being able to pass along knowledge uh, and, and, and develop, you know, uh, what, what we feel is, is necessary for, uh, the bridge between jujitsu and, and firearms. Man, I think that's so, what you just said right there is so crucial in today's world is like uh, people don't, people put life on autopilot a lot, I feel like. And it's easy to do because like you said, you, you know, account, good job, good money, mm-hmm. kind of all the boxes are checked. Right. But it's really easy to put life on autopilot and not make time for the things that you're passionate about. Right. And I think the theme of this podcast being self-preservation, it's not just going to be about the cool things that we like doing, you know, jujitsu, firearms, you know, off-roading, whatever it is. It's not just going to be about that, but it's actually literally about preserving yourself as a human being. Mm-hmm. Like what does Kyle want to do in order to make Kyle be Kyle? You know what I mean? Like right. what, what is it that Kyle does that makes Kyle go, Ooh, this makes me feel alive. This is very, this preserves me. Um, because it's so easy in today's society to just, Oh, that doesn't look, that looks uncomfortable. Oh, I don't want to do that. You know, it's easy to put that stuff away and just kind of float through life. Um, so and it makes me really happy to hear that you're like, this kind of snagged me mm-hmm. and you're putting in long hours at the office and then coming <laughs> here and teaching afterwards. So it's definitely not an easy thing. And, um, but I think it's really, really, you know, worth it to have you on the team that way. So I think that's cool that I think that's going to motivate a lot of people, um, to preserve themselves that way. I think that's a, a solid thing. So for sure. And I got to give a huge shout out to my wife, Jessica, um, yeah. who's, who's also a brown belt in, <laughs> in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's how we met. Um, but she's been putting up with, you know, the long, the long accounting hours as well. Just as, having a ba- and a baby uh, too yeah, as well. Brand new fire, <laughs> you know? And so we, we are both of us, I mean, you know, she's got her own practice and we're both just grinding around the clock yeah. and, and I just gotta, can't thank her enough, you know, for being supportive of this. I mean, you know, it's not, not far fetched to, to see her be supportive of this. Cause yeah. you know, she comes from jujitsu. Yeah, she understands so, it. Um, and I'm, but it does take a lot being that you just moved, you have a yeah, new kid, like yeah, all the stuff a, that's going on. Got a so. lot of outside stressors. So I, I'm really appreciative of we're gonna, that. We're going to, we're going to try and get Jess on here. I oh yeah. She'd be a really we'll, interesting we'll podcast between here. the, she'll, she'll be, she'll the, be between, on the mats. Between you know? the curse vert and the yeah. chiropractor cracking people for a yeah, living yeah. and, uh, yeah. just being an all around badass. I think yeah. that'll be a good, she, she loves shooting too. So. Yeah. Yeah. There's not a lot that she doesn't do, but, um, okay, Kyle, well, if there's anything else, I mean, I think that we're coming right up on 30 minutes. I'm just trying to, I generally try and keep these kind of short. Um, this is, you know, episode number one, uh, self-preservation. So if there's anything you'd like to say besides, Hey, come to come train jujitsu. If you're in the Woodstock area and you want to start learning some jujitsu, even if you're not in the Woodstock area, go train jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, shout out to that. We're, we're, we're just getting started and I think we have, 
we have a lot to accomplish and I'm just very excited about that. Um, and so, you know, come train jujitsu, come, come, come learn about your gun and, 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 you know, take some classes, uh, for firearms. Uh, we, we, we offer a very unique, very unique options here. So I think that's going to be very exciting, especially for the Woodstock area. Um, and, and that's really all I got. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, there's a lot of opportunities, guys, uh, between, you know, just jujitsu class here or, um, you know, some of the, the classes we do up in Tennessee with firearms, all that stuff. Um, you know, follow the Instagram. Uh, YouTube is a really, really big way that we kind of can get videos and content out. Um, so if you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, subscribe, please, and hit the little bell. That helps us appear and stay relevant on your notifications. Uh, we try and put out a lot of free, good information for you guys. So we appreciate the, um, you know, comments, subscribes, likes, all that traditional, like, oh, I'm an influencer, <laughs> do this and yeah. do that. Um, yeah. All that flashy stuff. Uh, but guys, that's all we got for the first little podcast here. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, go check out our website. Uh, the website is executive training grp.com. Um, that has all the information. We have a blog on there. We have tons of different things. Our YouTube channels, executive training group, all that stuff. Um, go check it out. Uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in and Kyle, thanks so much for being on the air, man. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Thank you.